Okay everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Today we are in Hicksville in Long Island and we'll be talking about Robert Shulman, a serial killer who killed five prostitutes. He was a postal worker. First we're gonna be stopping at the post office that he worked at and then we'll be going to the house where he killed and dismembered five prostitutes. So the post office is at 185 West John Street in Hicksville. His house is 11 Glow Lane, Hicksville. His room was the rear room. It was a it was a house that he shared with his brother. His brother lived upstairs. He lived downstairs. Okay, let's get into it. I'll talk about all his murders and then how he did it and stuff like that. So. August 31st, 1991, Lori Vasquez, a 24-year-old from Brooklyn. Uh, she was found in a garbage can in Yonkers at 6 Belknap Avenue in a plastic garbage can. Now, all these women were taken from the same, were picked up, not taken, picked up from the same corner in Hollis, Queens, a very popular prostitution corner. So they're all from the same spot. So this is in 1991. I'll put a picture of where she was found. Now, the way he usually killed them was he would pick them up, go back to his house, smoke crack with them. He would have cocaine. He would cook it into crack, and then they would do whatever they did, smoke crack. He claims, when he first got stopped by the cops, he claimed that he would black out from the crack and then wake up with them dead not knowing what happened which if that was really the case you call the cops right and you explain to them exactly what happened but since that wasn't really the case he kept lying and kept lying about it but yeah so he would smoke crack with them and then beat them to death with either his fists baseball bat he used a barbell in some instances then he would dismember their bodies usually take their arms off, cut their hands off. Uh, he's cut off a leg or two here or there. Um, yeah, so he was a really cool guy. So then, that was in 1991. June 27th, 1992, this woman to this day is still not identified. She was found in a plastic garbage can, same situation, same plastic garbage can type thing, behind a business called I Love New York Pizza at 1288 Midland Avenue in Yonkers. Uh, both her arms and part of her leg was missing. He did this so they were hard to identify, so you couldn't really tell who they were. Which I guess he did a good job because this lady is unidentified almost 30 years later. December 7, 1994 was the next murder. She was found in Medford, still unidentified to this day. Found on the side of Long Island Avenue in same thing a plastic rubber made garbage can and a county worker actually drove by the can on the way to work kind of noted it like it was kind of a weird sight to see goes to work tells the guys hey i found this brand new plastic garbage can on the side of the road should i go back and pick it up goes back to pick it up opens it when he gets back to his shop and uh they think it's like a bad load of meat maybe someone went and hunted a deer or something and didn't like the meat or whatever the situation. It was like covered in baking soda. So they finally dig through it a little bit and they realize it's a woman. Her head was wrapped in like a bath mat or a towel. And obviously they called the cops right away. The cops came, figured all that out. He dismembered her with an ax. He would use an ax, a hacksaw, knives. There was a little uh, screened in porch attached to his bedroom and that's where like he had all his tools. Because he got prostitutes a lot, so the prostitutes that he paid for and didn't kill would say that that kind of stuff was there. And a lot of the prostitutes that he did kill, it wasn't their first time going to him. So they would tell the other prostitutes what kind of guy he was. So then, next, uh, this woman was found on April 6, 1995. Lisa Ann Warner from Queens. She was unidentified for over a year. Found at a Brooklyn recycling plant, dismembered, of course. Alright, passing. 
his place of business very soon. The post office on West John Street. This is the post office. Him and his brother work there. His brother, like I said, lived in the apartment with him. He lived upstairs, he lived downstairs. Okay, let's continue on to his house. All right, so yeah, she was found at a recycling plant. Like I said, she wasn't identified until a year later. Now, the next woman is, she was last seen on December 11th, 1995. Oh, sorry, last seen on December 8th, 1995. Found on December 11th, 1995. Known as Milani, but her name was Kelly Sue Bunting. She was 28. Picked up in Hollis, Queens. Found in Melville, Long Island. Wrapped in a sleeping bag in a trash can. Now, the way that he was found is that they went to hotels in the area to see if anybody could identify anything about the person. I think, I believe they went to the corner that he would pick up all the prostitutes and they said, yeah, this man in a blue Cadillac comes around and picks up women. He goes to hotels, tries to find anyone that knows a blue Cadillac. A bunch of women say, yeah, we know the person. So he ends up getting the car a bunch of pictures of other cars, a bunch of pictures of other um, guys, and shows them, and the girls pick them out out of a lineup. Now, the car is registered to the brother, Barry, and Robert Shulman was the actual murderer, but I guess he would borrow his brother's car. So, with that information, they go, they find the brother, and none of the prostitutes could identify the brother, only Robert. So the car leads them to what they would assume would be a hotel because that's most of the time where someone brings a prostitute, but it leads to 11 Glow Lane in Hicksville. So they see that, they walk by the car with a cadaver dog and the cadaver dog identifies that there were human remains at one point in the car. So that was pretty much uh, dead solid evidence. Now, he was arrested April 6, 1996, out of his house by an undercover cop, brought into the car, whatever, driven to wherever. He moaned and groaned, saying he would never do anything like this, you know, he's whimpered, he kind of, was kind of a baby about it, you know, you're going to kill all these people and cry about getting arrested. But the brother was actually arrested also for helping disposing, helping to dispose the bodies using his car, and I'm sure he knew about the situation. How do you have your downstairs neighbor, your brother, killing women and you don't know anything about it? So some of the crazy stuff surrounding him. He was he attempted suicide with a razor after his conviction. He was first charged with the murder of the two women that were found in Yonkers, and then he confessed to the three more that were found in Long Island. Like I said, he claimed he would smoke a bunch of crack with them and pass out uh, and black out. Traces of blood were found all over his room, his bed, his walls, his floor. I mean, everywhere. There was enough evidence just on the blood alone to convict him. He was sentenced to death when he first got sentenced, but New York overturned the death sentence in 2004. So then he was resentenced to life, and he ended up dying in prison at 52 years old, April 13th, 2006. I think like a year and one week after he was originally arrested. <clears throat> he whimpered when he was arrested, saying he felt horrible. And yeah, we'll be at his house shortly. I have uh, three minutes till we're at his house here. We actually get to see where he committed these crimes. We have a crazy truck coming up on the left. The 
put in perspective, we're in a truck, we're in an F-250 right now, and that is much, much higher than mine. Right now we're on New Bridge Road. We'll be turning onto Stewart Ave. actual definition of a serial killer because by law there needs to be a definition to charge someone with that kind of stuff. It's three or more people killing three or more people in a similar fashion within 24 months. But then I was thinking, I don't really understand that because let's say you kill someone when you're 20, then you kill another person when you're 24, and then another when you're 28. Aren't you still a serial killer? It's more than two years in between, but I mean, come on, you kill a lot of people. That was a cool little motorcycle. Sort of this guy not having any idea of how he was. Now we're on Brittle Lane. Looks like it was totally remodeled. This house. We'll get a good look at it here. So this is 11 Glow Lane. He had the back bedroom, so you probably had to go around the back gate to pass his little. Okay, that was weird, but my camera overheated. But this is the house. Right here, 11 Glow Lane, where all the atroc atrocities took place. Five dead women beaten and dismembered in this house. Bedroom full of blood splatter everywhere. All right, if you enjoy these videos, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments. Those are greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.